Welcome to the first edition of Wifey Wednesdays. You're going to join me every week and we're going to go over different topics on flesh and blood and we're going to go over new things happening. This week we're going to go over the format of commoner decks. I have found that I like commoner decks a lot more than I do uh, blitz decks, sealed format, and even drafts. And I know some people are going to look at me like I'm crazy, but as a new flesh and blood player, commoner is actually a lot easier for me to understand and a lot easier for me to learn. So when you're looking at commoner, it is an exact 40 uh, cards in the deck, no more, no less, and they're all commons. You are allowed to have two rares. That's a whole other thing I'm not getting into, but all the cards are common. Now, what makes a common card is if it has ever been printed as a common, even though there are some cards that were printed in one thing as a common and then in, in another set as a rare, it's still considered a common card. So for that, you can use that in common decks. What I find in the commoner decks, it makes it easier to learn the game and understand the game when everyone's kind of on a level playing field. It made it really easy for me when we were in New Jersey playing the commoner to pick up a brand new hero that I've never seen before um, and play it because they're common cards so they're not overly too uh, hard to understand. And I didn't have to worry about someone having a fabled or a majestic or some rares that are just overpowering everything else. And it also allowed for the, the playing of the deck to go smoother. Now in Commoner, you can only play for 30 minutes. That's usually the uh, standard round time of how long they're gonna allow you to play. But at the same time, it also is fun because when you're playing in a registered event as a Commoner uh, event, you don't reveal your heroes or your equipment until it's time to start. And I find that to be awesome. So the first thing you're supposed to do is you're supposed to reveal your hero. All right, from there, you're allowed to pick out of the 11 pieces of equipment, you pick out your equipment based on the other person's hero. And once you have your equipment, then you reveal your equipment and then you play. And I find that to be so fun. And it's kind of unpredictable at times because you don't know who, who you're gonna be playing. You could have a deck built out for, for one hero and realize that you're playing a completely different hero and you are not equipped. So it should be fun. Um, I do hope to show a little bit of um, commoner play whenever I get a chance to attend any of the armory events coming up. But other than that, next week we're going to go over, hopefully by next week we'll be able to go over um, some of the foreshadowing that uh, LSS has been doing in their flesh and blood cards. Upon my uh, exploration, I found one card that looked like it had a dragon in it way long before we ever got Uprising. And so hopefully by next Wifey Wednesday, they will have the Uprising cards in the, in the US and we'll be able to go through and see if we have any other foreshadowing and then pick through some of the other ones that I found and see what are they telling us, what can we expect and what should we expect moving forward. So this is just a brief version of what Wifey Wednesdays are gonna be like. So join me next week as we go over foreshadowing in flesh and blood. See ya.